Hey guys, I'm back again. Oh, wow. Oh, jeez. Uh, um, yeah, this is Jake's Metal Chat, episode 41. Yes, 41 now. Having 40, having 40 episodes, yeah. About 41 episodes, yeah, definitely. Um, Frozen Soul uh, went on a walk today as well. So I thought, nice sunny day here in Bristol. Nice, nice you know, nice walk. Not on getting messages. Um, anything of those? Uh, better that my guesting because he is waiting before I get him in. Uh, thank you to those who have been checking out these videos and also to sorry, I'll just get comfortable. And also to subscribing. Again, 289 subscribers. So that is good fucking going. Anyway, better get him in. Uh, I've got myself a beer. Then a frozen soul. Uh, I'll PA. Hello, let's start the video. There he is. Ah, there we are. <laughs> Hello. Turn this up a bit. How you doing there, Jack? You all right, mate? Um, yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing, Cole? Good, good. You had a good week? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've been going for walks and listening to death metal, obviously. Like you do, like you do. Absolutely, that's good. Well, you know, it's Friday, and I've uh, settled down to a nice beer. All oh, very nice. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. I've got a nice one that suits my uh, ticks all my boxes. It's a, it's by a local brewer called Dig Brew. Co, you're based in Digbeth, just on the outskirts of Birmingham. Birmingham. Uh, it's called Watch Me Go Zoom Zoom. Watch me go on, zoom Zoom. That's we're on Zoom. I'm on Zoom. So perfect. It's, it's incredible. And it's, uh, yeah, it's very nice. It's a, a pale, a pale ale. That's it's incredible. cloudy. That's good. Yeah, I like That's got a stupid name. And it's not, it's not that strong, actually. It's only 4.5%. So, um, yeah, good. Got, we can um, we can start here. Hobgoblin IPA. Yes, yes. I do like my witch wood. That's a nice, a nice, uh, a nice tipple, indeed. A nice, a nice little tipple of. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so here we are. Oh, yeah, okay. well, welcome to Jake's Metal Chat. This is episode forty-one. You are guest number forty-one. Episode forty-one. Blimey! I've been, I've been doing this since May. Right last okay. year. It's good. Well, it's been a good way to pass the time, really, hasn't it? You know, and no fill that, that, that no void no. that is out there. Yeah, absolutely. No gigs, I mean, no are you are you recording this, or would you like me to record it? Or oh, I'm, are you I'm recording? recording? Oh yes, I can I'm see. Recording. I can I'm see recording it. on my ends. So you don't have to. That's great. That's good. It's one less job for me to do. One less job for you, because <laughs> well, everyone knows who. Everyone should know who this man is. If you don't, then you've been living under a rock. I have to. <laughs> But this is Carl Willis. He is from Memoriam. As good afternoon, know. good evening, good, good day, evening, good talk, where, wherever you are in the world, and whatever course, time of day. Yeah, any time of day, whatever you're doing. Hello. And of course, he was in the legendary death metal band, Bolter, who I got to see once in 2014 at Damnation Fest. Yes, that was a good show, yes. Oh, which, uh, damn, good, damn good show. Walked in, Mercenary was playing. Yeah, yeah, and we and we are playing Damnation again this year with Memoriam, so we're looking forward to that in November. Yeah, yeah I will be uh, seeing you there. Exercise, it's just great, great lineup actually, isn't it? You know, and, oh, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of the way Gavin's kind of like taken. You know, obviously he's, he's he's needed to kind of get a few UK bands involved, which is always good to support oh, the yeah. UK scene, and he's uh, listened to what people. Uh, suggested uh, and followed that feedback and he is engaged our services for the evening which we are looking forward to because there's not a lot else happening even now still it's all mm -hmm. you know very much up in the air we've got bloodstock obviously That's which is happening. You're gonna, yeah i'll be seeing you there as well yeah and there's a couple of other things maybe in the uk that are uh, bubbling up underneath the surface which may be happening yeah. but uh, apart from that all the european uh, shows which we were banking on doing they are there's a big question mark over those still, you know, with regards to this, this third wave of epidemic that is uh, rolling through. So, you know, that's, you know, it's all still very um, uncertain oh, the times here. we live in. Yes. Oh, up in the air, unfortunately, but uh, let's hope the UK ones go ahead because... Yeah, yeah. I think we need time, it. Yeah, because the first time I saw you guys, Memorial, that is, 
before we get on to more about how the band formed and everything, I saw you guys in 2016, the first time at Bloodstock. Yeah, that was a good day, that was. Yeah, yeah, in, in the Sophie stage. Yeah, we yeah. enjoyed that. that was yeah, I love that. I just went in and thought, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Strip the stuff. Oh, there's, a, oh, there's Andy Wells at the bar. Hey! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doing, some, doing, our, doing our thing, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. great, great show that was. Yeah. A, this goes out all to you and Harambe. I just Harambe, like, yes, that was the thing that was going back on. Everybody around, was just it. saying Harambe at Bloodstock, <laughs> and I was like... I think I know what they're on about. Oh, the gorilla that was shot. Gorilla, the poor gorilla. The whole the set. We dedicate the set to Harambe. Of course. Here's to uh, here's to dead gorillas. And to all the <laughs> legends that we've lost over the years, <laughs> including LG Petrov. Of course, we lost him. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that was very sad. Uh, you know, news that was when when that. Uh, yeah, you've met you've like met that. him over the years, of course. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a you know not a lot of times, but every time I did meet him, meet him, it was a moment, you know, a real occasion full of uh, of merriment and joy. Merriment, drinking, uh, and definitely. So yeah, he's, he was such a larger than life character, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah everyone that you know that met him or, or knew him, he kind of just really enjoyed being around him. It was it was great, you know. Uh, yeah, very very down to earth. He's a gentleman, yeah, a real gentleman, and uh, yeah, it's that very sad loss, you know, to uh, to lose LG. But you know, this is life. We uh, are made up of sorrow and mourning and loss, and that's what makes us who we are as people. It's how you get on with it, how you deal with it, and uh, that probably links in quite nicely to your first question. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, usually, I ask how you've been coping during this, you know, this thing that's been happening. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good, that's a good opening question. Um, well, I yeah, I mean, we we we've been we've been writing an album. <laughs> yeah, of course, the uh, album. That's it. You know, it, it's, it's it's a bizarre, you know, situation for us all to be in, isn't it? You know, it's it's crazy, and we've all had to deal with it in our own individual ways. And um, you know, we did have quite a busy, hectic um, schedule of gigs lined up for 2020 you know in the promotion of um the last album requiem for mankind album number three and we started off the year quite nicely did a killer show in london probably the best show we've done in uh, london um so far uh which was great that was in february then we did a couple of shows in denmark which were brilliant we had a good time over there uh and that was in march and then the week after you know the life as we knew Everything ceased to be, you know, the whole the curtain came down. Covid, Covid uh, restrictions are in place right across Europe. So we look at got a couple, two or three shows in, you know, which was quite nice. That's but that was it, you know. Everything we had planned in the schedule of shows for the rest of the year got uh, postponed until 2021, and we're finding again that a lot of those are being postponed again till until next year. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's been, so we had a massive void in our um, in our calendar to fulfil and. Um, so we were booked into Parlour Studio to record album number four in October. So we did have a um, a kind of like a, a, a kind of deadline to work to. And normally, you know, in under normal circumstances, you know, we, we're busy. We're busy. We're kind of rehearsing every week, either to you know get some songs together for the album or you know to, to rehearse for gigs that we play. And we do shows virtually every other weekend throughout the year. Which keeps us busy and and very much um, the album kind of always is always there, but in the background really. And we only ever get to really focus on recording uh, an album pretty much about a month or so before we go into the studio. We kind of shut shop, stop doing shows, focus on the album. On so really, we only ever spend concentrate and focus entirely on doing an album for about four or five weeks before we do it. And that's the thing. You know, I think that stands. So with it, with everyone really that's that's the way it works because uh, yeah. you've got to fit it in somehow but obviously with no gigs to do we did have a bit of an extended kind of uh, time to to work on on the album um which i think's really really been beneficial to us you know we, we've got, the music itself was all pretty much uh, written by scott in his studio riff central um by June, July time, you know, that was all, all it was all pretty, pretty concrete, you know. Um, so I we got to listen to it, which gave me instead of having two or three weeks 
to write the lyrics. I had two or three months to write the lyrics, which was great. But it gave me, I mean, it was, I had so much time that I kind of, I had time to write them and rewrite them and think about them a bit more and think, well, I don't really like that bit or that's a bit, that's not, not good. Um, so, yeah, I had plenty of time to write the songs and structure them. And it, we got, it got to a point in September time where they, where they were all done and the, the lockdown restrictions eased a little bit uh, back in September, I seem to remember. Um, so I had the opportunity to go over to Scott's studio, Riff Central, and demo these lyrics that I've written, you know, which is the first time I've ever done that, ever, you know, in, my, in the history of my 30 years of doing this, uh, the first time I've ever managed to demo the lyrics, the vocals to an album. And it was a brilliant experience because... You know, it gave me the opportunity to try out ideas and see if things worked or not. You know, it gave me that space to, to restructure things so it did work properly. So when we actually did go into the studio in October, we were in a very advanced state of preparation. You know, so, so the actual recording of it itself went really smoothly because we all knew, I knew, yeah, we, we all knew what we had to do. We all knew where to, the lyrics were going to go. I wasn't writing them as I was recording them like I normally am, um, you know, and, um, you know, we, we obviously the, the actual band had got to hear the lyrics before, you know, before as well. So they, they never get to do that normally. They usually get to hear it once, once they're done at the end of it. So, um, so yeah, I mean, this, um, Busy. it's had some benefits. It's had some benefits. Having this time and space, to uh, to work entirely and focus totally on this album really gave us uh, has, has, has been beneficial. You know, I think that's in a way, in many ways, why this album we've done uh, album number four to the end, that one uh, is such a strong album because we've had such a lot of time to prepare for it. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of other factors that that uh, make it what it is. But um, yeah, it's, it was a, it's an absolute pleasure. It was really easy to record it. it, it yeah. Apart from I had um, I had, I had, a, I had a broken tooth. I'd, I'd, uh, <laughs> not, 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 not the best thing when you're trying to record an album is, is I had, <laughs> I had a, a tooth broke and I had to have like um, two of them taken out, which probably wasn't right in the middle of me doing the vocals as well, which was oh, a bit... Oh, that's uh, just bad. Which gave me this extra, uh, get ex, extra kind of level of anguish and pain. Which uh, which I managed, I think I managed to inject that into the lyrics, into the actual <laughs> delivery of, of the lyrics on this album. I think it's across. <laughs> I think it shows in, in the album. Definitely. I had to mask it with her. I had to mask the pain with horrendous amounts of uh, alcohol. Alcohol <laughs> to just get through it. Painkillers <laughs> and alcohol got me through. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, we're going to talk about the memorial albums because I got all four, all four of them, and Good obviously man. I got the new one on CD and vinyl. So, Good man, that's what we like to hear. Absolutely. Also, sort that stupid record player out there and get some speakers and playing it. Those, that 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 royalty goes directly into the memoriam beer beer fund chest, which is good. There we go. That's, 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 there we go. Now we can see it. He's probably paid for this sip. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm loving this guy right now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is what I like, I ask all the guests that I've had. Where did your music journey begin, and how did it get into metal? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a quite good question. Um, well, I've always been. I come from a kind of musical background in a way. You know, my family. That's good. You know, I've got uh, older brothers. Got uh, three other three older brothers that are you know um, you know twenty odd years older than me, um, and they were all in bands in the sixties and seventies. Oh, you know, yeah. kind of like fairly. You know. Successful bands on the local circuit, they used to kind of like play all the social clubs in Birmingham and they did, you know, get on to play the university circuit, supporting bands like the Small Faces and the, the Who and things like that. So mm -hmm. they've, yeah, so that, being around people that played music from a very early age, you know, it kind of gave me that kind of like mindset that that was a possibility of something I could do with my life, you know. A lot of people that haven't got that around them, it doesn't really kind of, it's not an equation or not a, a factor that really comes into their mindset but I think being brought up in that kind of like with that surrounding being surrounded by music my dad was um an events manager as well he was like a booking agent so he used to book lots of bands to um to play in these clubs and pubs around Birmingham so you know from a very early age I remember you know answering the phone to these strange and wonderful, weird kind of people and, and, and all these strange kind of like musicians like Stevie Winwood and, and, and kind of like all these, you know, got big 
60s kind of icons from Birmingham <clears throat> would come to our, our doors to collect their, 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 their money, basically, from, from my dad, for, who'd got paid, who's got paid direct by the, the, their venues, and then they got their cut. So, you know, I was aware of music and, and that being a possibility. But, yeah, but I've got, I've got very little patience when it comes to musical instruments. So I could, I, I tried piano, I tried, you know, uh, guitar, I've tried all sorts of it, but I haven't got the patience to, uh, to, um, to, 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 to learn a musical instrument. So, but I'm quite good with words. Which, and I'm quite good at sorry. engaging with people. Uh, so that's, I naturally fell into that role of, as, as being a vocalist, being a frontman, really. You know, I can't sing for my life. You know, what I do is what I call, um, it's, it's 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 basically it's it's rhythmical shouting what I do. Oh, that's cool. uh, <laughs> and it goes like fits. It fits the music quite nicely, you know. And uh, so uh, so 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 yeah, yeah. It, it kind of all flowed quite naturally. And you know, um, we kind of got grew up in Birmingham. I was into the kind of the uh, the punk scene here in Birmingham, the alternative punk scene. And uh, you know, kind of I remember going to all these gigs when I was you know 16, 17, 18. You know, in Birmingham, you know, there's a the, the place called the, the, the Mermaid, which yeah, I've actually yeah. lived at every other weekend. I was down there to see other bands that are playing Napalm Death. We're, we're on there virtually every weekend. Uh, and, um, you know, Digworth Civic Hall in, in Birmingham is another a legendary venue where, you know, I used to see all these Anaco crust punk bands as they were, uh, you know, talking crass, you know, anti sect amoebics, discharge, you know, uh, axe grind, all these bands that are emerging. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Deviated Instinct, all these fantastic bands, you know, were, that were kind of like coming up and emerging. And I was kind of very much engaged with that kind of scene. Um, you're not metal, you know, not metal at all. You know, not wasn't really, you know, you, you likes of of uh, you know, Judas Priest and, and and Saxon and all that kind of new wave of, of of British heavy metal. That that really wasn't my bag at all, you know. Um, but you know, I used to go to all these gigs at. Um, at the mermaid and, and yeah my, my, my one of my friends from school uh his aunt was married to uh a gentleman by the name of andrew whale so there's a little connection there you know there's a bit of a, almost like a little family kind of connection there and he was in a little band called urban chaos and he was doing some shows and and then he joined a band called bolt thrower you know and uh, yeah. i kind of got interested in them through him and uh you know they they, they, need, they needed a driver you know, I this is, I think, yeah, I could drive. I had a little Triumph Herald back in the day, you know, and uh, I could drive. <laughs> so, yeah, I got the job. I got the job as a driver, uh, which is great. Yeah, so I got to drive them to all the, all the gigs that they played around around you know, the local area. And, the, and then again, later on, further afield in, in, in London and Nottingham and that, and got to drive them to the, the John Peel sessions that they did when they did uh, oh, yeah. drive down there. So that kind of got me involved in that kind of like, uh, con and connected to, to, the, to the band. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really kind of think that I could do it, you know, be, a, be a vocalist, but I remember I was really into a band called Sacrilege. They were my favourite band. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I remember seeing them on my 21st birthday, which was 1987. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, oh, there's, a, there's a legendary demo, there's a tape, a live tape out there. It's got uh, Tam giving me a shout out for my 21st birthday. Oh, there, which is great. I've got that somewhere. Yeah, she's fantastic. Cool. And uh, that was a defining moment. It made me, I, I think that was a light bulb moment. When I was watching them and thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I'd really like to have a go at doing that, you know, getting up there and being on the stage and, you know, kind of like, you know, doing this kind of like stream kind of stuff. And uh, that kind of planted the seed that, that I could do that or would like to do that. And um, and then when, after I bought you know, I was driving around and doing these dip peel sessions and, yeah, that went really well. And off the back of those, they got an, an album contract, uh, an album deal off uh, a label called Vinyl Solution based in London. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, we were kind of getting prepared to drive them down to, 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 uh, to Wales, to Loco Studios in the middle of nowhere, to record the album. And then the, the, the original vocalist decided that he kind of really didn't want to yeah, kind of carry on. He couldn't really commit him to his, himself to doing the band on, on such a larger again? level. What was his name, Andy? What, uh, what was that? His name's Alex. Alan West, his name Alan was. West, that's it, Alan. Alan West, not the not the guitarist out of a bit. Oh, no, this is a different one, folks. <laughs> this is the original vocals. I've heard the demos, and I know what his vocals sound like. Absolutely. So, so like, there was the opportunity for um, for someone to join. You know, I went through I went through an audition process. 
you know, there's, two, there's, there's half a dozen of us went up down and, and did a bit of shouting uh, alongside the uh, the music. I don't think I was any better or any worse than the other people that auditioned, to be to be perfectly honest. But I think what I got, why I got the job, was basically a, I knew them. <laughs> B, I could drive. <laughs> so really, I got the job by default at the end of the day. You know, I didn't get it through any skill or On technical two ability. Aspects, two things. Yeah, absolutely. I you just knew them and you drove. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, I just ticked a couple of boxes, really, and um, I kind of just grew into the role, really. And as you, know, as you do with everything, you grow in confidence with what you and do. The rest is history. Yeah, and the rest is history. Yeah, and 30, 30 plus years on, here I am today. Here you are today. Still, you, do, still doing it. You're still doing it, and obviously, we're not going to go too much into Bolfer because that's been spoke about that's enough. The past. It's that's the, the past. It's gone. That's the past. It's gone. It's It's the past. It's gone. Get over right. it, everyone. Get over Get it. Over it. <laughs> you're expecting me to talk about Bolfer and his man. It's mainly in the new band. But before we get on to that, I mean, we're not going to talk about both. Yeah, but it's, it's important to kind of like get a grounding of my Get a grounding of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to that. show you my favourite album, if you don't mind. My favourite album, well, it's The Fourth Crusade. Abba Arrival. Abba Arrival. No, it's The Fourth Crusade. Okay, yeah, well, that, yeah, that's up there with mine. You know, I think Fourth Crusade uh, and Victory were the defining moments yeah, of the band. I've got two copies of it. Yeah. Yeah, that was, they, they were they, for, for me. They were the glory years. The, day, the days, you know, well, you know, <clears throat> when I was young and wild and fancy free and foot free and had a good time doing it. You know, I, I, you know, again, I did it later on in life. I did mercenary, you know, but really, I wasn't. I only did it to help out the band. Really, I wasn't really involved involved in, in, in promoting that. Uh, and then again, I joined later at the end of the career to uh, to do those once law, and that was great. That was great. That was great, in, you know, because you know I left after yeah. uh, recording for Victory, so I never got to pr promote that. And I left for ten years. You know, I mean, because I, you I, went it's, on to university. It's a weird thing because I, I was I was only in the band for about fifteen years, and it's it's something that kind of seems to have defined my life, <laughs> which is a bit weird. But uh, it's, it's the way it is, you know. And I, and I accept that, and I understand that, and I and I I, 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 I kind of I understand how people kind of view the band and uh, hold them in some kind of sense of um awe because what we did was great you know we had a I'm, great I'm time. One of them. yeah well we had a great time doing it as well it was, it was great but uh you know things change things move on we have to we can't we can't uh, just hold keep on. talking about it because we can't we, hold on to the past don't hold on to it we can we mention to, the band but he's not going to talk about it <laughs> absolutely i think it's good to acknowledge it Acknowledge it. That's acknowledge why I say it. if we can just acknowledge it. And then move band, on. <laughs> not talk about it, acknowledge it, that's fine. Because we're here to talk about the new band. Obviously, one of the no. reasons why Bolt for Yes, well, you know, it's without, split up. Because yeah. obviously we Absolutely. Without without all, without all that history, that grounding of what I did. Yeah, we lost yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in this position to be able to do what I'm doing now. Yeah, we you lost, know, so so uh, yeah, that that is the, the reason. So yeah, when when Bolt threw, well, when Martin passed away, uh, which was an absolute shocker, we were in the process of um, preparing to do an Australian tour, you know, which we were really looking forward to, and uh, rehearsing, and then Martin had a massive heart attack and died, which was a complete uh, shock to everyone, it had a massive impact on all our lives, you know, and... Um, yeah, Thank I will. To, oh, I've just spilt beer all over the table. Oh, for crying out loud, don't do it. You're older than me. What are you doing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hold on, I'm going to lick it up. <laughs> I've never had anyone do that on my chat. You're the first. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's still all over the table. Uh, anyhow, um, uh, so, so, yeah, so... Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, I was left in this position thinking, well, you know, what's... What am I going to do? You know, uh, having, having to deal with with the with the, the sorrow and, and grief of, of losing one of your best mates, uh, someone that's very close to you, um, was bad enough. You know, but also, you know, when you when you do lose people, and it happens quite regularly, them, yeah, like absolutely, yeah. And, and and the older you get, the more ha more regular it happens as well. You know, that's the that's the thing of of getting old. Uh, you know, people do pass at a, uh, a faster rate so you kind of have to come to terms with it and but it does question you make you question your own mortality 
it does kind of like put everything yeah. into perspective and it makes you really question your own life and makes you realize that um you know you've got to really focus on the things that you know and, and love doing mm-hmm. while you can uh because you know you just don't know what's around the corner do you you know um so you've got to you've got to do live life as full as you can as best as you can as best as you can for yourself you know and for for the others as around you so you know i was thinking well, what do i do you know do i sit around do i wait around for bolt thrower to potentially you know decide to to carry on or or, or not carry on or do i just do something for myself and, and one thing i've learned throughout my life is that if you sit around and you wait for things to happen sometimes they just never do uh, so if you want to get ahead and you want to do something with your life you've got to do it for yourself at the end of that you've got to pick yourself up just yourself down drive forward and make it happen for yourself you know because no one else is no one else is going to do it for you at the end of the day you know it's, um, it's down to you that your I life is down think, to you and i think that is the right way of going about yeah. it just do your thing obviously yeah, I mean, some people might it's a might. Uh, from 1986 to 2016, so that's 30 years of absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, some people might may, may uh, not like you for doing that, or uh, kind of not agree with you doing that. Maybe they feel that's not the right thing for you to do. Uh, However, you have to do it for yourself. You, lost you, know? you have to put yourself. Yeah, you have to put yourself yeah, first and drive for and try and create some positivity out of otherwise, which, which was like a a very dark and and negative place to be in. So yeah, I, it made me think. Well, what do I want to do? What do you want to do? Just continue the band. Just not continue that band. Continue doing music, but with a new band. Yeah, yeah. Well, I quite, I quite like to carry on doing pop in, in, in all respects. But all that wasn't the option. No, it was an option. That. <laughs> we won't go down there but that was it was an option that was it was an option that was on the table I just say, <laughs> had this amazing run release phenomenal albums done so many live shows supporting grave and vader in 93 which i've seen interview footage of yeah 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 and yeah. um that must have been mental but <laughs> Yeah, well, it's great. It's, it's, it's great to see those bands still around. Yeah, because we're still, still bumping, going. Which is we still bump into them. We we have some great uh, times together now, uh, like, reminiscing oh. about the uh, reminiscing about the, the old times that we used to have together. So it's it's great to. Uh, like, it's, oh, yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. I did. The old, see, we 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 all all us old guys. We, we just refuse to give up. That's, that's the thing. We refuse to give up. Can you do me a favour, Oliver, and get me um, a towel from the kitchen? That's my little boy. He's going to wipe my little beer boy. up for me. Hello. so so you know so i was thinking well what do i do and i think well you know i've always wanted to be in a band with mm-hmm. whale again you know whale was the reason i got into a band in the first place yes. you know and when he when we both we both left in 94 something like that and then i rejoined again you know i rejoined again and i always had that kind of in the back of my mind this bit of remorse and a bit of guilt the fact that i rejoined the band and he didn't um so i, I always and i always wanted to work with him in the band again because he was yeah he's my best mate he still is still always will be i was just about to ask if he's still your best mate <laughs> yeah absolutely so so so, so, so i thought i thought well you know that that's what i'd like to do i want to be in a band with whale uh um, if it, if he can't be uh can't be vault thrower then let's do something different let's do something else yeah and, and um you know frank Frank's an old mate of mine. I've known him for 30 years from the it's same scene. You know, Benediction, we always used to talk mm-hmm. with him all the time. You know, and we always had to have the at the end of the night or, you know, whenever we used to go to clubs in Birmingham or pubs, whatever, at the end of the night, we always had these drunken, rambling conversations about doing a band together. And that kind of conversation went on for about 20 or 30 years and just never mm-hmm. really got anywhere because we were both doing our own things and busy doing like, our own like, oh, into all my band. so you know he was gonna have to be the bass player if i don't i think i think if if he hadn't have been the bass player he'd have probably killed me so uh <laughs> so um so so yeah it had to be the bass player uh, i had no choice um uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you'd be like this i was, I was coerced he forced himself upon me <laughs> he's a great bass player <laughs> He's a great bass player. Okay. So there we are. That, that we, we had the basis of doing a band. That is, that's the basis. And we got uh, and we got Scott involved. Scott, I didn't know Scott. 
you know, he's, he's, he's like 10 years younger than me from a different kind of generation, different sphere of influence, really, uh, in metal uh, from what we, we were. But um, yeah, he worked with Benediction live in South America. He filled in for, for, um, for Daz when he couldn't make it due to work commitments. So he filled in on guitar for, for Benediction in South America. So we knew that he was a good guitarist and we knew that um, he could get on with Frank, which is, you know, that's kind of quite key because not a lot of people can. <laughs> it's quite difficult. It's quite difficult. It's quite a difficult character. He's, he's, he's a very difficult character to get on with. <laughs> no, he's, he's a darling. I was going to say, oh, wait, I've got to make some effort here. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's a lovely lad. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, he, he doesn't he doesn't suffer fools, you know, greatly, yeah, so uh, lightly. So, so, uh, so, yeah, so we knew that that was kind of uh, going to be the basis of what we were going to do. So we got together uh, in the pub in Birmingham, Hare and Hounds, uh, in King's Heath. We got together just before Christmas and just had a little meeting together, saying, well, you know, let's do this. Let's meet up in the new year. Let's get some songs together. Let's do some, let's just have some fun. You know, let's not, let, we didn't really have any big aspirations to do anything just huge. fun and don't take it. Yeah, over what we always do is, was, was kind of get in the rehearsal room, jam out some old punk rock classics or something like that, and have a bit of a laugh, have a few beers, have a laugh, and get that that joy and that energy back from when we were doing it in the very first place. Yeah, call it a midlife crisis, whatever. But that's what we wanted to do, was kind of just generate a bit of pleasure and a bit of joy from doing music. Because, you know, after doing things for such a long time, sometimes you lose that a little bit. You know, you kind of lose that kind of like what the, the sense of what you were doing it in the first place for. So, yeah, it kind of diminishes that kind of like that, that feeling. So we want to recapture that 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 flame, that, that fire of why, we, why we're doing it and have some fun. You know, at the end of the day, so we did. We thought, we thought, well, let's let's do it. And um, so we rumbled up to the first rehearsal, which was probably in early January two thousand and sixteen. And and um, Scott said, well, you know, okay, we could have a crack at doing some um, some old punk rock covers. That'd be fine, but not really where he comes from. He's not really his bag. He said, I've got some, I've got some idea, I've got some ideas, I've got some riffs that you might you might like. Yeah. And listen, so he played us his riffs, and immediately the whole it ru it ruined it. The, uh, it ruined, <laughs> ruined the concept of doing a little little punk rock covers band uh, and playing some local 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 shows went out the window completely, and uh, a band creating its own music was born. And um, so there we are. We had, within within a matter of two or three weeks, we had three or four new so fresh new songs. Um, we kind of like we kind of put them together. We 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 were approached when we when a lot of record labels found out that we were doing something. They approached us. They hadn't heard what we were doing. They hadn't heard oh, of, of, of yeah. We got approached by several record companies, and um, we got offered some pretty lucrative, nice deals. So we chose to work with Nuclear Blast, and they offered us a three album contract. And for the past. Three or four years, for following on from that, up to 2019, we recorded three albums with Nuclear Blast, and uh, we got all three of those. Every year, we, we we kind of put out a new album. We kind of we yeah. maintained That's that kind I of like. schedule. Yeah, I mean, what what, I like we were trying to, you. yeah, which we were trying to kind of do it like like we like you do when we first an album out. every year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's how we started out with Bolt Throw. You do that. You when you first a new fresh exactly. band, yeah. you do it. You do it. You you release a, a voracious place because the creativity is there. As time goes by, that creativity seems to to crumble because you're stuck to a certain mm -hmm. blueprint and your expect expectations are up there. But with Memorium, we we have we've started with you. I think we've we've developed a blueprint now. You know, I think by album number three, Requiem for Mankind, we kind of just, we established our working formula that works you know that, and that is predominantly russ russell parlor studios you know and, and dan seagrave as the artwork yeah, that is dan what seagrave. works for us and so we're going to stick to that but musically creatively we've got a pretty much an open blank canvas we can work to we're not we're not tied to one fixed kind of like dynamic that we need to follow right. uh, and we are quite prepared to experiment and try out new things you know sometimes those ideas might not work, but we're prepared to do that, you know, and um, and that's the beauty of being in this band is the fact that we've got that creative space to do what we really want to do on our own terms. 
and that's what we do. That's good. And uh, how many questions have I just answered in one there? You, I don't know. You probably answered that, <laughs> but I'll still continue to ask my questions. And that band I was going to say earlier is Memoriam. And how did the name come about? Who came up with the name? And yeah, me, me, you me, came up me, with that me, name. me. Yeah, we, we we were kind of like we we were um, we were you struggling know, a bit because you know when we when, when, you first, when you when we started out doing uh, a band. 30 odd years ago in this genre yeah you could pick it pick a word and and you know no one no one would have it you know or you couldn't research it so it didn't really matter yeah but now there's so there's, there's millions of bands millions of bands across the, across the globe and it's really hard to come up with something that's it's original a band name. fresh yeah absolutely it's really 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 important impossible yeah in fact there is a band called, called memoriam from cyprus uh but we thought well yeah fuck them uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, who are they? Oh, God, that's I'm, Carl, I'm Carl Willits. Who are they? Uh, <laughs> He's been Carl Willits. Goodbye. <laughs> so, so we, we did. We kind of gave up thinking about a name for about two or th- about two months, and we, and we thought, well, we, we'll just yeah, we'll just write some music, and the name will come organically from the song titles and all the lyrics that I, I write. And it did, you know, we, we kind of like, that's how it works, you know. I mean, Memorial fits quite nicely because, you know, the whole band, in a way, is was formulated as a as a tribute to Martin or as a catalyst from that experience of losing him. So the whole concept of the band is about, you know, loss, mourning and, uh, and the tragedy of death, you know, um, it's being a death metal band. So Memorial fitted quite nicely. So we, 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 we kind of jumped on that. I, I did write a little song called Memoriam as well. So, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> and so that's where it came from, really. Um, yeah. And it fitted, you know, we were banding around all sorts of of, um, of, of band names. And, you know, some of them were like old bolt thrower song titles, which I'd written. And it's amazing. You once, you do, once you do a little bit of research, it's absolutely virtually every, every bolt thrower song title is taken up by a different band. Has got a, a, there is a band in the world for every single bolt thrower song just, title that is there. Like, <laughs> oh. like, uh, okay there is so i couldn't use any of those uh, uh, my, my copyright was meant means nothing uh, <laughs> we won't get but, into uh, that absolutely but so yeah so we came up with memorial and it, it kind of fitted quite nicely it was straight to the point one word and oh. uh starts in m ends in m quite nice yeah. works logo looks good so yeah yep. that's and we just roll with that and it, it works and um roll with it. So, sorry sorry that sorry to you lads in cyprus but uh it is what it is mate <laughs> yeah, there's, there's like some like they all have that some bands have the same name and then one band gets bigger with that name and they're like oh there's no point now yeah exactly we are we, we are we are memoriam uk you know, memoriam for all intents memoriam and purposes memoriam. <laughs> memoriam from the uk yeah and i like i said i got all the albums good man and of course Thank you. And I will be showing the first one. The oh, yes. Up. Yes. Always special place in my heart for that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Album. You can yeah. Probably see all the artwork. As, that. We had some we had some some great times recording that album. Yeah. You know, one of the highlights for me, you know, I mentioned earlier that the, the, yeah. the light bulb moment uh, for me was watching yeah. Sacrilege play. And we got Tam, my hero, heroine. Not that, not that top heroin. Heroin. Uh, I what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back about. Uh, no, um, get the spoon going. No, my 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 hero in a female format. Um Linda yeah, Tam, oh, Tam Sim, yeah, Linda, Linda Tam Sims, and she came, she lives quite close to that studio. So uh, she came down and recorded with us, and uh, we did the captive together, which um we we, we put out as a seven inch. And she did the the the, uh, the female lyrics to uh, to last words, which for me still is one of my favourite memoriam songs. It's mm. epic and big and lovely, and just the just the, the chance to work with her for me was very much full circle. You know, it's like one of those life affirming moments. Um, you know, because like I said, watching them and, and, and that band and playing with Damien in, in War Wound. 
you know, he's he's my hero as well. You know, so so, so playing with all these people and meeting them and, and being in the studio, you know, I, I I still have those fanboy moments. You know, I'm still a fan at the end of the day, like, like everyone else. You know, I, I, I there are people that I idolise and go all gooey about. Uh, and and <laughs> Damien and, and, and Linda, Tam Simpson are two of those people. Always will be. Always will be. And here's a nice band picture of them. Yeah, look at us there. We're in the, we're in the, we're in the graveyard there at the jewellery quarter in Birmingham. Look at those rough people. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't mess with them on a dark night, would you? No, I just feel like this. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I just feel like this. Yeah, we're like, oh, oh, I don't want to go near them. I just like this. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, we had a, we had a great time. You know, I mean, it was, it was early days. We still did, we did, were defining yeah. ourselves as a band and, and the sound, trying to work out what we were trying to do. We, we, we really one thing we wanted to do from day one was not sound like Bolt Thrower. You know, we tried very hard not to, but you know, ultimately, you know, we got the drummer out of the band. We got. The vocalist out of the band so that kind of comparison is always going to be there you know um i think and we've worked hard creatively to try and move away from that and i think it's taken it's probably taken two or three albums for us to get to that point and i think we've achieved that with this new album to the end we've we've got to the point now where where i think those comparisons are starting to slacken off a little bit which is which is good news yeah and uh, like is that what i'm saying this is Fucking great album. I love it. Um, I love the cover. I love the, the cover's cover. brilliant. Obviously, yeah. Dan Seagrave, of course, yeah. who is a big, big part of the death metal world. And before we get yeah. into the next album, I bought a vinyl from Black City Records, which is Bristol's very own heavy metal record shop. We uh, opened it on the 17th of April. Very good. Very good. It was open on that day. And obviously, I found this. And that Dan Seagrave piece of art. Ah uh, yes, 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 yes. I mean that's that is very it's much uh, part, part of my part of my tattoo. It's kind of based on based on that kind of like, that I, is yeah, a cool tattoo. If I ever had the chance to speak to you, I would have said I would have said that is a cool tattoo, and it is. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of almost well the, the demon itself actually is based on on Dan, on David Vincent's because because we did Grind Crusher. And yeah, again, Morbid Angel. Mm-hmm. Massive, I was a massive fan of David, Dave, uh, of David uh, Davidson. And there you go. The and uh, and Morbid Angel. They were one of my favourite bands back in the day. Awesome. And um, yeah, I, I got all, I think I got all gooey around because they were very American. First time I really kind of met any Americans as well. That was. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that 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 tattoo is based on that idea. And then it's those cool those kind of like kind of merging schools again that's based on that album cover so yeah there is that dan seagrave connection that is a deep seeded connection yeah like i said that's a cool tattoo i love it when i when i saw it in that interview when you were on tour with vader and grave i was just like that is one cool tattoo yeah, yeah I, I had it reworked um a couple of years back actually because it yeah obviously uh, over the years it fades God, it took about thirty hours because each each session, because all, all the all the the, the the they merge, so you can see them one way, and then you turn them around and they go another way as well. That's so it, each yeah. each little school took about an hour each. So it got done over a period of about thirty hours. Yeah, well. But yeah, I've had it, I've had it, re, I've had it touched up again because it's a refreshing it. Yeah, because so you've had it for what? How long? Blah, 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 blah. 30 odd years about, now. About, about, about 30 years, about 20, yeah, 30 about 30 years, years now. now so, yeah. so it does fade. It needs, fade a, it needs a touch light. up after that long. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's quite nice to do that as well. You know, it's nice well. To, to reaffirm it and re reinstigate it back and give it its life back. Yeah. Okay. That's an interesting one. Uh, Gojira, one of Gojira's albums. Yeah. 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 The Download Dog, because what the hell? The Download that? Dog. <laughs> uh, that. Skull and a Celtic cross, which I'm going to add stuff to. And yes. two zombies on my leg. Two zombies on the leg. On Very the back good. of my legs. <laughs> oh, good. my legs are going to get covered at some point. Not all of it, just down that area. Well, this one here is, is, is based on, the other one here, that, that's roughly based on the um, Possessed album cover. Oh, um, Eyes at the Eyes of Horror. Yeah, that's it. So there you go. So that is that one there. I've had that, I've had that extent, extended over this year as well so yeah i'm con- contemplating doing some more but you know life money you know mm-hmm. you know it's hard to uh, justify spending shit like thousands of pounds on a tattoo when when you've yeah. got bills to pay <laughs> there you go. And, uh, yeah. of course this album came out in 2017 that's about 
what, four years ago now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like, something like, like, something like that. It's, just, it's all been a bit of a blur, to be perfectly honest. It's just like it's done it. It's, oh, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> and, uh, this one came out three years ago. Ish, three, three years ago, yeah. And it's this one. Silent Vigil, yes, Silent absolutely. Vigil. That was, I mean, no, again, piece of fucking awesome art. Lovely art, artwork done by. I mean, that was that's the uh, the second phase of the death. What I now consider to be the death trilogy, where uh, the, that's it. The minions are um, paying tribute to the fallen leader, and um, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting. I mean, for for me, it's one of like there's some, some killer songs on that album. Um, it gets slayed sometimes because because you know the production values is, are different. It's a lot rawer, uh, but that's when we're trying to achieve something a bit different with that album. Yeah, we, 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 we were kind of ex- we we're still we we're still kind of experimenting at that stage. Yeah, we're still trying to find and define ourselves, and you know, and, and you know, that's, it is it is what it is. It's, it's a snapshot I, of that point in our in our lives and that point of, I, in, I of time. Like, I like the rawness to it as well. Yeah, yeah, for me it really works well, and there's some killer songs on there as well, you know. So, uh, so it's it's a great album. Yeah, of course, I love the title track, the Silent Vision. Yes, I love the whole album. Mm. And how long did this take to record? Uh, it took a while actually, because we, we 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 chose we, we chose a studio in Birmingham called Rich Bitch Studio, and we and we chose that studio because it had a very rich heritage. That's where we all recorded demos and rehearsed back in the eighties. It relocated to a different place, and to be honest, it, it didn't reach. It didn't meet the expectations that we that we anticipated. To be to be brutally honest, um, but it, yeah, it is what it is. We, we come up with a great album. The the the, uh, the songs are very very strong, and they they come across very well live. You know, and yeah, it, it was part of part of our uh, it's part of our journey, part of our, yeah, our our development as a band. And yeah, you know, we fr- from that we we learnt a lot of things, what to do, what not to do, moving forward. And I think we took a lot of that on board. And following that, we came up with probably you know one of our strongest albums to date, which is Requiem for Mankind, which is the next follow up album, yes. which this was one. which is that one, which has started our 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 lovely little relationship with uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Russ Russell. We've always wanted to work with Russ, but he's such a popular man that his schedule is fully booked, often 18, 24 months in advance. So that really was the first album that we could actually kind of like engage his services yeah. to work with him. <laughs> and uh, I think I think that's, that, that was our defining, our, our defining moment, really, with, with, uh, with Musical.ly. I think that with this album, Requiem for Mankind, we... we we defined ourselves as a band. We, kind of, we found all the, the Russ and Parla Studios was almost like the missing piece of the jigsaw that we were looking for. The jigsaw puzzle. The jigsaw puzzle. And, and um, it's a joy. It's a, it's a joy working with Russ. He's, he's an absolute wizard on the, that that desk. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And more importantly, he's almost like a um, he's almost like a silent fifth member of the band now because he gets involved with the production of the songs uh, from a very, very early stage. We, he's part of our Dropbox group. So when we are writing songs, uh, we drop them in a rough demo format into the Dropbox and he gets to hear them. So he's got an idea what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve from, from day one, at the very embryonic stage of the development of the songs. He's yeah. part of that. So when he, we get into the studio with these evolved, developed songs, he's got a clear idea of what we're trying to do. And he's got some clear ideas what he wants to do with them to make them work um, and, and make them work even better. So, um, so yeah, that's a really good relationship we, we've got with him. And yeah. I, we've got to, I can't see us really ever moving away from using Russ because that connection we've got with him is... is um, is one of the like minds. He's a lovely man, and oh, we enjoy we enjoy working done. with him. He's, he's and yeah, it's, it's, it's it's a killer studio as well, and, it, and it's not that far away from where we live either. He's in, he's in Kettering. Yeah, you can you, if you want, you can just blow up there. It's, it's, it, it takes about an hour to get there, you know, so it's it's quite easy. It's quite it's on like, virtually on our doorstep. Well, that's 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 good, yeah, because obviously I live in a different part of Bristol to where I would go and rehearse, but I could walk there and just. Take yeah. one if I put up my if I get take my you know have a good pace. But, uh, 
Obviously, yeah, those three albums all came out with a space of a year. Obviously, 2018 yes. when Sign Vigil came out, that's my second, the second time I saw you guys at Bloodstock on the main stage. God, that was wet. Sitting down with rain. That was bloody wet when it, but it stopped. It bloody stopped. We made it stop. We you stopped stop. the rain. You made it stop for that long. We are the gods of weather. And all of a sudden, like, yes, it was. It was like it was, it, it was very weird, wasn't it? It was like you know, it was pissing down. It was really, really pissing down. It was down, really it? hammering it down. Obviously. And then probably about, about two thirds of the way through our set, set it stopped. And then oh, and everyone appeared from out, 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 out of the shelter and out the. Uh, the, yeah, the, the tent. Yeah, and, and the field got full, and it was great. Yeah, it was really, was really a, good. Yeah. I was with my mate, we were just standing in one bit where we could see it, and I was just like, yeah, it's raining, and I was wearing my kilt as well, so I was like, that yeah. <laughs> trousers are going to get soaked. Went into the tent, got a bit. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long weekend being wet. Yeah, so, but mm. yeah, I mean, when, when, when the, uh, it stopped raining, everyone came out, it was a phenomenal experience, and, and in a way, quite, I'm quite glad that happened, because it, it, it showed us a video. You know, uh, seeing everyone emerge, here. yeah, <laughs> oh. we are here. Uh, when we get stopped. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's strange. St strange playing on the main stage at an early, early part of the day. It's, no, it's, it's, uh, well, I mean, it's a str I, I, I much prefer as we as we are playing in Bloodstock this year. I much prefer playing at the Sophie stage, which is yeah, yes, inside be, uh, at a later later part of the day. Yeah, we'll be getting a, a very good spot when you guys play. Like, like, yes, I think hey it's guys, sat hey. Saturday main headline. No, Saturday main support. Uh, yeah, hey, so that's it. hey, hey, hey. Oh, hello, hello, Harambe, where are you? Harambe. So, uh, it's like oh, we've visited. it's me. <laughs> it's the one who talked to you on Zoom. <laughs> So oh, yeah, so we're looking we're looking forward to that, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, yes, so so there we are, and, and and here we are with our number four, yeah, absolutely. Our number four, which we will get to. And what's the t-shirt you're wearing? Oh, this T-shirt was sent to me today. I don't see it's, it. It may be in reverse to you, but no, uh, it's it's it's, 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 it's yeah. noise inferno. It's a um, it's not reverse to me. Oh, it's okay. That's good. It's a it's a band from from Mexico, and I received it in the post this morning. Now, okay, T-shirts. Okay, I like T-shirts, but i get t-shirts sent to me every week i have only got limited space in my cupboards to accommodate t-shirts i have got something in the region of four or five hundred t-shirts now and when i do shows the whole point for me to do shows the thing i like about doing shows is it gives me the opportunity to get rid of some t-shirts so i always wear a t-shirt like this cut the sleeves off play a show at the end of the show Throw it in the crowd and throw it in the crowd. It's one less t-shirt. One less t-shirt in my cupboard. Last year, how many shows did we do? Three. I got rid of three t-shirts last year. How many t-shirts did I get? About 30. Yeah, no. The ratio of t-shirts in to t-shirts out is not working for me. Oh, I need to do shows. We need shows just so I can get rid of some bloody t-shirts. Well, hopefully, if you wear it when you see you at Bloodstock. This year, I might, I, I might have to like take do do like one t-shirt per song or something like that, just to, you know, and get rid of it every, well, after every song. Front, you get, I'm getting the first damn shirt. Absolutely. So every, every song, just, just get rid of the t-shirt, put it on, get rid of the t-shirt. That's I think that's the only way. It's the only way I can do it to get back some some a some space in my cupboards and b the ratio of income to outgoing t-shirts. It's 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 it's. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Thank you very much for everyone for sending them. You know, I'm not being gracious or uh, here, but but um, there's only there's only t-shirts a man can take. So many, I got so many that some of them don't yeah, even fit. I, think, I get I think, XL t-shirts because I got broad shoulders. Well, that's it. You can see, but but um, but I think I think I think it's that is the the the, the modern dilemma of every metalhead, isn't it? You know, I think I think if you speak to anyone on the scene, we've all got way 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 too many t-shirts it, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a habit that we can't we need to uh, we need to form like some kind of like black metal t-shirt t-shirts metal t-shirts anonymous something like that we need some sort of forms so like, do you want this like we consider doing doing forming some kind of like support like the samaritans but for for metal t-shirts oh yeah definitely we should do that yeah i think that could be the could be the way forward <laughs> 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 help me, my help collection me. is swamping my life. I can't move for t shirts. 
like I'm buried in my shirt because I'm not going to be coming out for a while. Can't leave the house. I can't get out of the house. I've got too many oh, t-shirts. Why can't you leave? I've got too many shirts. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can't, can't, can't find the door. I'm, I'm just going to buy a shirt and drink inside her. <laughs> but it's great. I, on a positive note, people I, throughout this um, global pandemic for the past, you know, year or so, we have, on a positive, yeah, from, from the band's perspective, yeah. everyone has been really, really nice and really good and supported us financially by buying our merchandise. So our, our merchandise sales have been really good, good and really, really healthy. So you know, thanks to anyone that's listening to this that's bought uh, shirts from us. You know, it's, yeah, it's really, really helped us out throughout this. Uh, this difficult time sure. and you know, kind of replaced a bit of money that we would have lost, yeah, you know, that we've lost from not being able to do shows, uh, and helped pay the bills and my excessive beer, um, bills as well. So, thanks, thanks, yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks, everyone. Yeah, because you're always hosting the beers you, you drink. And yes, I, I saw one that was from my neck of the woods. Okay, yes, I I did. I, yeah, there's a few based in I Bristol. Can't remember I which one it was. I don't know if it was vocation or somewhere along the Yeah, vocation, I think it might be vocation. Polly's, I think Polly's, Polly's are based in Bristol. I think I'm not um, sure. Chris, we've got but, New Bristol Brewery, I think you had some of those. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I yeah. So, you've had I some do. from my neck of the woods. So. I do far too much, but but only, only in moderation. You know, I never, only ever, ever have two a night. I, know, I never have more than two a night. So well, that's that's my message. Kids to everyone are taking out there. you to bed. Enjoy it for what it is, but don't take it too far. Yeah, always your kids are going to try and drag you up the stairs, do you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 got, I've, got, I've got responsibilities. Something like this. Yeah. Oh, he's had it again. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I have to acknowledge my responsibilities in life. Two a night. Once they're, once, once they're in bed, I hit the whiskey quite hard. So, Ooh. there you go. <laughs> and getting on to Rorium, obviously, the, his background is of the new album. And of course, yes, new this, album. this, yes, yes. Yeah, so a new, a new, to the end. a new, a new start, a new hope, a new future. Um, it's fantastic. We asked, we asked commencing a new trilogy. I'll say that the, the previous three albums, which were on Nuclear Blast, formed what I could now refer to as the death cycle. Because, yeah, it was, it was all about the, you know, experience and, you know, exploring the feelings of mourning and sorrow and loss, you know, following the loss of, of Martin. Three albums on, that's all kind of come to a close. We saw the kind of coffin being taken to the ground. So this new trilogy of albums this is the start of something new we are seeing for the first time bob the central character bob whatever you want to call him uh i call him bob uh he's alive he's alive yeah, yeah you've never seen him live in the past in the past you've always, you've always seen dead he's always been in a coffin dead well there he is and he's there he is right there. bob bob is alive bob is holding a, a, a glowing green orb symbolizing kind of life and there is light. There's light. There is light I might in the background. Actually, get him as a tattoo. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Bob, get Bob as a tattoo. Everyone, get Bob as a tattoo. Yeah, uh, get, get and, 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 and so, yeah. So this is what I consider to be a, a new uh, trilogy, which I'm in type, kind of like formulating as the life cycle, right. as opposed to the death cycle. Yeah. Uh, and it is very much in the vein of Star Wars. Um, where this is a prequel. This here scene is the, the, the scene before For the Fallen. So this so that, moves into For the Fallen. So that, yeah, that's afterwards. That's him dead. Like that. That's him alive. So yeah. that, that's, this is the battle that he's leading his troops into, which ultimately he gets killed in and starts the death cycle. So this is the end point of his life. That's what's called to the end. Yeah. And uh, I work, I'm going to work in reverse. We're going to work in reverse throughout this character's life. And the next couple of albums within this trilogy are going to explore and look at specific points in his life, which we are yet to, you know, make any. I've got some ideas where we're going with it, but yeah, we're going to look at his life. We got, we are, as I've said it before, I've said, said it before. I'm going to say it again. We are celebrating life through death metal. Through death metal. That's what we're doing. And I've said it, it's, 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 a, it's a kind of like a, a moniker that I've, I've lived by, and I've said it before in the past many, many times. And that's what we do. We are celebrating our lives. You know, life is too short, uh, and we are trying to create some joy. 
yeah and whenever you play live it's a very joyous experience you know the whole thing is so um Definitely. so yeah so that is what we're doing and this so there's life there's like this is the start of something new we're on a new label reaper entertainment so it's a rebirth of something as well starting a new like with a new label yeah right yeah reaper. yeah now reaper are um basically made up of for members of staff from nuclear blast that left to form oh, a new yeah. label uh oh, nuclear blast got taken over by a pretty large major global um corporate company oh. believe digital which is a big french oh, digital yeah. uh distribution company as a result of that the shake-up um, they changed their roster we left uh and half the staff left as well you know and um we decided to work with people that we know and we trust which is a guy called flurry he was our main a and r point of contact at nuclear blast and he left to start reaper entertainment so again it was an opportunity for us to uh to start something fresh and something new with this yeah, and uh it's worked out really well they did a brilliant yeah. job they did a brilliant job with this in this album. Yeah, they're, they're different formats. Considering they've only been going for, you know, under a year, they've got that experience from working at Nuclear Blast. They know what they're doing. Uh, but the way they put it together, like the box set, I've never had that before. That was great. All the different types of vinyl, the way they promoted it. We got to number nine in the German network charts. And that's crazy. You know, we were up there, you know. It's a better picture of that. We charted higher than Neil Young. <laughs> it's, just, it's just madness you know and uh it's, it's great it's great to be part of that and be part of something fresh and new you know another little aspect which you probably haven't mentioned but you may want to mention is the fact we've got a new drummer as well that's added yes you have a new drummer and that yeah yeah, yeah well way i had to step down from drummers you know I, i'm still good friends with him i still see him regularly but he's got a bit of a shoulder injury um so he had to step back from doing the album and uh, playing live for for the yeah, time being. I was being. wondering where he was. I was wondering yeah, where he was. yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, it was I difficult. Thought, I thought he just gave up drumming. No, he's still going to do it. He's still doing Darkened. He's still working with Darkened, and he's still open to working on different projects. And you know, who knows? In the future, maybe maybe me and him will do something together. Whether that be with Memorial or with with yeah, something I, else. I was afraid future. that he gave up. I was like, no, no, no. He's, he's never going to give up. I, I, give I, up. I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't let it drum again. I'm not going to let him give up. If you're watching this, you can't give up. Too good a drummer to give up. I will absolutely, you. not really. But he couldn't contribute to doing this album, so he, he stepped down. And we, we've engaged the services of Spike, who uh, again, you know, he's worked with all the bands that I know and love in the past. You know, oh, he's worked with the, the Damned, English Dogs, yeah. Conflict. Uh, sacrilege, you said Killing Joke as well, and Killing you? Joke, you know, yeah. and Killing Joke are my favorite band in the world on the planet. And uh, to have someone that's played with them, you know, we've we've, we've utilized that quite it considerably. Shows on this album, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so yeah, a lot of bands. No to Whale, but but um, Spike does bring something different to bring something to different, yeah, absolutely. Every and that's again, something different, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's contributed again. To making the album what it is, you know, it, it's, it is a step forward, uh, you know, in a big way for us. But yeah, this is the vinyl version. Um, the one, that's the one. Yeah. Um, I'm camping where there's pictures taken, but I know someone named Jim Beerman. He does top yes. rock radio on Switch. He yes. did not live too far from when this photo was taken. It's taken a place called Spitfire Island. Spitfire, it's Spitfire Island. That's the one. Spitfire. Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, well, we call it Spitfire Island. I think it's oh. got. It's, it's called. It's called something else, it's actually. Uh, it's got all the. Yeah, you know, it's and it's it's basically in a place just on the outskirts of Birmingham called Castle Bromwich, which is where That's the really factory where they used to make the Spitfires in the Second World War. Basically, yeah, so there you go. There's there's the connection you, there. That's uh, why you said he didn't. It's too local. Time. Local industry and and uh, industrial heritage. Yeah, because there's one bit in Bristol in Avonmouth. There's still a factory from the mustard gas factories from the First World War. Yes, 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 yes. And yes, I did a play about it because I do a bit of acting. We did a play about it. Yes, my my granddad uh, was a chemical technician in a factory wow. uh, in the First World War. You know, a chemical wow. uh, munitions factory in the first world war yeah in fact so he was such a skilled um chemical musicians worker that he was and he was a, a very good um he was a drum instructor as well so he instructed all the uh the drummers in the reg regimental drummers as well as being a, a chemical engineer so as a result of that he didn't have to go to the front line and and die 
So that's why I'm here. Probably. That's a bonus. Yeah, absolutely. So that that music yeah. again, music's probably saved by my uh, my 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 bloodline, my 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 family heritage, uh, and that's why I'm here now. Is the fact that my yeah, granddad no. was a drummer and he, and uh, a chemical worker, so didn't he didn't have, have to. to, to didn't have, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I mean, uh, ironically, uh, there's a the little story I'll, I'll, uh, that he kind of he wanted to join up. He really wanted to join up, but his, his employer wouldn't let him because of his skills. Oh, and he, he he trained he trained a lot of drummers or the regimental drummers. And the regiment that he was going to join, which is West Warwick's, um, as a drummer, uh, went went off to uh, to do a drum ceremony up in Liverpool. It was supposed to be. You know, where all the kind of like all the different regiments met, met up and did like a you know, kind of like a, a meet up and drumming, you know, right. spectacular. And on the way to Liverpool, apparently, uh, the drum that the uh, the train was diverted because of what's going on in in Belgium and France, yep. and they got diverted to the Somme, so they never got to do this this drum okay. uh, session in Liverpool. They got oh, straight, yeah. straight to the Somme. And um ninety percent of them got killed on the first day. Ooh. You know, and if my my granddad had been involved if he was in on, that, if he yeah, was on that train, he would have yeah, been. Yeah, so if he'd been on that train, he'd and you wouldn't been, be here. He wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't be here probably. So there we go. So, so there you go. You're here, and um, I'm here. Was, We're doing it. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so music saved my family music life. Music saved your life. Yeah, it makes that family's life, and hence why you're in doing you're doing music. Absolutely. And obviously, with Going back to BT, just to shorten it, when I got your message saying, oh, we're not going to discuss that. I was thinking the internet provider as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to discuss British Telecom. Uh, they, they, I owe them. <laughs> <laughs> we are not, into, no, we're not going to talk about BT, the internet. We can talk, we can talk about Virgin Media quite a lot if you want. Or, um, Virgin Media. Virgin Media Sky. or EA is my, um, my te telecom provider of choice. Uh, that's mine. <laughs> yeah, obviously war was a lot in those lyrics in the BT days and obviously in memoriam there's, there's aspects of war yeah. as well yeah yeah i mean it, they're always going to be there you know it's it's, it's a lyrical thing what you're interested in that's, that's, but yeah it's always been inspired me and interested me and you know it's almost something that that's all there is no law exactly yeah, yeah. i got that on vinyl <laughs> There you go. I think it's almost something that's kind of anticipated and expected from me as a vocalist. Yeah, you know, and I do not, you know, wish to uh, let people down. So it's always going to be there. It's always going to be part of my uh, vocal weaponry that I use. Yeah. Um, because I can, yeah, you know, I can. I can actually write songs about war in my sleep. I've been doing it for such a long time now. You know, it's, it's quite easy. You know, it's, it's, it's my almost my default rest button but yeah i do like to press push the boundaries i do like to have some kind of balance i do very much like to write songs that are a bit more of overt political nature as has been noticed with memoriam and i enjoy and relish doing that i think it's important to make um social comments on the world that we live in uh, in reality rather than living in, in in fantasy and and the past i think it's really important to to look to the world around us and seek inspiration and say Definitely. things about what you feel is wrong about the world that we live in you know i think if you don't participate in that process as having that op opportunity to do so then if mm. you don't take advantage of that opportunity then you're, you're almost part of the problem in a way you know you bury your head in the sand and pretend everything's, everything's perfect and everything's wrong then uh then you know you, you, it's that's not really achieving anything so you know i'm not really kind of like um expecting to um change people's opinions or, or uh, make people's minds up things. But I like to just opinionate about what I think is important. And that often resonates with people who have got the same mindset as I have. And it's like, yeah, as long as it kind of like does that, that's really all I'm, that's, I'm concerned about, really. Yeah. Thing, really. Yeah. yeah. I'm quite prepared to stand on my parapet and, and, and pontificate about the things that I think are right. And I'm quite, uh, quite happy to receive criticism for doing that, you know, because I anticipate it, you know, and uh, frankly, I don't really give a shit because that's how that's I feel. Still, yeah. And I've got, I think I think that's that's that comes with confidence. That comes with age, I think, as well. You get to a point in your life where you don't really you get get care about what other people. You give shits less. Yeah, I think if if you walk walk around your life and you care too much about what other people think about you, then then that's not really. Oh, I've stopped, stopped caring ages ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as I'm long really as you're twenty nine. Yeah, absolutely. As long as you're happy in yourself and and you, you know, you're, you're kind of proud of the way that you live your own life, 
uh, in, a, in a good way. Yeah, that's all that matters. That's amazing. But you know, uh, with this, this album as well, with Memoriam, I do like to write songs which have got a bit of a, a reflective nature about work, life in general, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's those are the songs for me that resonate the, the most. Yeah, that's the thing, they're the songs that people can relate to quite closely because we've all been through all the ups and downs and the joys and the sorrows of life in general haven't we so um so yeah so yeah, for, for example you know as my heart grows cold off the new album um, i love that track that's, that's probably my favorite my, that's probably my favorite track off the album candle mass yeah i love candle mass i love candle mass uh i never had the opportunity to do songs like this in the past either you know because no, we've been all very, just like, yeah, just like this and it's got yeah Absolutely. And Each Step One Close to the Grey, that's a very slow doom metal song as well. You know, Mass Psychosis is a very Mass Killing Joke inspired song. So, yeah, it's great to be able to try out different things and have that, that, that blank canvas to do what we want to do. Has it Mass Psychosis? I just missed it. <laughs> yeah, just down a bit. Down a bit. There. <laughs> down. Down. Yes. Found it. Yes. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Which is a favourite song by Shane Embry of Napalm Death. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, fun little fact. Obviously, my favourite, obviously, is Onwards into Battle. Right, it's the, like how the, it starts. The opening one. And yeah, as soon as your one. vocals come in, like you say those lines, Onwards into Battle, one more yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, oh. as soon as we recorded that one, because, yeah, when you, when you put the songs together. I got together, me Yeah. As soon as that happened, I was just like... We knew, we knew that that had to be the opening track of the album, really. Once once we kind of got that down in the bag and we have recorded it and mixed it, we thought, yeah, that just it stood out as... As the, as the obvious opening track to the album, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No effect and failure to comply. Yeah, I mean, there's something in there for everyone, really. You know, yeah, it's, but... without, without sounding uh, like a marketing guru, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, it's got so many different tones and textures and, and different directions yeah, that, uh, and twists and turns. And that's what makes it such an interesting and exciting album to listen to. Yeah, I love this album. It's one of my favorites <laughs> this year, along with... This band's album, this is Frozen Soul. Yes. They got the album Crypt of Ice. And if you listen to their music, obviously I talked to them on Thursday. Very influenced by your old band. No, really? <laughs> no, they're influenced by something else. Yeah, I think they're they quite can, morbid angel. Yeah, they can join the queue. There's quite a few in there that well, coming out recently. They, <laughs> they, they coined your old band as an all time favourite. Yeah, that's not, it's nice. To, it's nice to know that we've had kind of inspired uh, people uh, from the music we created or been involved with. And it's had that level of inspiration for for uh, for other yeah. people. That's nice. It's always, yeah, it's always yeah nice I was to talking to them on Thursday. And yeah, I've, I've, oh, I've, read, I've read some interviews with them. They seem like a, a nice bunch of guys. Yeah, you know, I was so. chatting some chatting Mike and everybody kind of said, I told them on their show, I said, oh, I'm talking to Carl Willits from uh, Memoriam. He's like, oh, yeah, can you ask him if he wants to go on tour with us with Memoriam? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> sorry, Chad. <laughs> sorry, Chad. It ain't happening. Not now, anyway. We don't do, we don't do tours. We don't, we don't do, do tours. tours. You just do the we don't do tours. Yeah, we, we are, we're too old to do tours too now. Old to do tours. Yeah, we, we just do gigs. Like, just do gigs. Yeah. That's it. We just do gigs that we want to do on our own terms, really. It suits us that way. We we we've all, we've all got jobs. We've all got kids. We've got other responsibilities in our lives. So I, I think jumping on a tour bus and doing an extended oh, tour for six to eight weeks and and playing Bridge End on a Tuesday night to 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 twenty people really doesn't really hold any glory in my books. I've done all that. Don't really need to do it again. Don't really need to do it again. I'll leave that. I'll leave it. I'll leave that to the young, the young books out there that want to do it. You know, and they've got to do it as part of their part of their growing up process, part of their development. They have to do that. But we are so beyond that now. Yeah, and you just do the shows you want to do, and some people might think we do. We do turn down. We actually turn down. You know. A, a lot more than we do we actually do we get we turn probably turn down about 80 percent of what we get offered <laughs> we're very, we're very picky very picky very picky and uh, yes. i was gonna say i don't like i was gonna say about this on no effect you said that was about the effects of social media positive yeah. and the negatives and yeah, i can absolutely. see, I can yeah, see that from a, yeah it came from a direct experience really yeah i was watching one of my friends that i'm in contact with on twitter and watching him being um you know virtually bullied really and, and being a character assassinated for for things that he's done in the past and the way that uh, the whole snowball of it um 
uh, affected, you know, was 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 quite horrible to see, really, you know. And um, you know, luckily he's a, he's a good 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 lad, strong in character, and um, you know he's, he kind of got got over it. Oh, no, but you no, know, if you, if you didn't have that physical and mental strength, it could destroy you. That kind of like uh, kind of like cyber bullying in, in that respect. But it was it was just horrible seeing everyone putting the boots in. You know, and people just joining in. You know, it's just, uh, and that's you know, social media is great. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's great, great for, for, for to, to make you feel connected. But yeah, everyone's got a bloody opinion. You know, you see, you see some people doing reviews of albums, yeah. for example, and you, yeah, just some kid. It's 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 that's just you know, who gives a, who gives a, really, you don't really care what you think about our albums. To be perfectly honest, well, I, I like it, and the people and the people that like it like it. So that's all that matters. Yeah, I love it. I was going to say they didn't like your albums. I was like. Oh, yeah, right, that's okay. Fair okay. Enough, but I know all oh, doesn't give a oh, shit. That's great. Well done, mate. If you don't yeah, like it, so that's great. Paul might say to me, "Oh, I don't care for the more." Yeah, well, I mean, I, I come from that kind of. That's fine. Like, you know, and I, Paul doesn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of come from that kind of like mindset where you know, if you can't really say anything positive about anything, well, don't, say just, anything. Just, just don't say anything. You know, there's, there's plenty. Of, there's plenty of things out there on the planet in the world that you can say something that you, you know, or talk about things that you do like. You know, so just just concentrate on the positive aspects on of life positive. rather than yeah. You know, that's why you got you got to be positive. You know, there's too much positive, negativity in the world around us. And uh, death metal's positive. Absolutely, that is what it's all about. It's all about positivity and spreading joy and love spreading and light. Spread the joy of death. Yes, metal. but then people might think spreading joy of death metal. What? The joy of death metal. The iron. The iron. The, the, the iron. The irony. The irony. It is the irony. Mm. And. Uh, as well as doing band stuff and all those other stuff, you also did a slot on Gimme Metal. I did. Which I again. listened to. Yes. Again. Yeah, you were. You were there. I'm doing another one. Doing another there. one. Yeah. In fact, I've got a couple of ideas. I might, I might roll forward and do a couple. But I am currently in the process of compiling a new one. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. It was yeah, kind of. I just kept weird. saying like Axe going to oh, Amoebics. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, all yeah. These bands. I was just yeah. like. I think the next show is going to be a little bit di different because I've kind of like I've used up all those ones. Uh, and, um, so, but, but yeah, I, I mean the, the list is endless, isn't it? You know, what yeah. things that I was you, just like, like I know all these bands, even though they all started when I wasn't even born. Can, can you can you rather than go hold the line? I need a wee. Oh, I, I will pause this while he's having a wee because I might need to do the same. <laughs> and we are back. We, and we are back. We are, we back. are back. We yeah. are back. We are back. We are back. And you were talking about Gimme Metal, this is uh, online radio. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. You know, um, I haven't done anything like that before. So um, it was quite nice. I mean, I've really got all my timings mixed up. And uh, I logged on about three hours before my show was on. And I just sat there just now talking. talking to people for two or three hours. quite nice to, to do that. No, I was just talking to people. I was just, like, saying yeah. all this stuff. And yeah, then, quite, obviously, quite nice. going, going back to LG again, obviously, you yeah. played in tune. Yeah. And yeah. saying, yeah, I mean, it was because I, re I recorded that before LG before we passed, passed away. away. Yeah. And hearing that tune, you know, kind of it, it was a very kind of a weird, you know, emotional kind of like uh, yeah. moment. I heard, I heard it. it again when yeah. I was like on the walk, and I was just like, yeah, it kind of it, it, it brought a tear to me, mind, joy, honestly. but also like, sadness that yeah. he's not here anymore. Yeah, absolutely. It did physically make uh, and bring a tear to my eye. It did. Yeah, he's also a massive influence on me in terms of my vocals because I'm doing death metal bands as well. He's one of them, and I also said in the chat... Don't send me a T-shirt. I'm going to send you a T-shirt. <laughs> oh, I, mu I might, just don't get rid of it. <laughs> unless, I bring you, unless I give you too many, then, then you can, you can, you can get, uh, keep one I'm going to give yeah. you. And oh, yeah. I, 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 I mean, generally, I, I just really enjoyed doing it, and they've offered, they've offered yeah. me another slot, which I, I've got, I'm in the, currently in the, in the process of putting together. Um, so yeah, but I've got some ideas for, for, for some other ones to do in the future as well, which may be a bit more specialized and relate to my musical history more directly. Yeah, because you had Axe Grinder, Amoebix, I think you had DVD Instinct on there. Yeah, I didn't know, didn't, didn't use DVD. I mean, on didn't this, use on this no, 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 but I, I, I but virtually had Doom, Doom were on there, and uh, you know, all, all the old the Napalm were on there, Carcass, all the old, all, all the old boys. I was, I was also expecting to see Prophecy of Doom as well. Yeah, I didn't select them, did I? I mean, there's so much, you know, the actual kind of white I actually saw the vocalism and the guitars in an hour band called Pray for Pray. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I, I, about at the time, I didn't know who it was until I looked him up. I was like, oh, I 
Come on, Greg. <laughs> yeah, so I've got some kind of balls. He hasn't got his long hair anymore. That's, the, that's, <laughs> why, that's how I didn't recognise him. Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, so I'm putting, putting a new show together and that should be fun. That should be aired towards the end of May. And uh, so I've got some of the ideas in the pipeline to, to carry out because it's quite good fun. Yeah, it's just well, yeah, a bit I of fun. I'll be there for that one as well. Good. And in fact, uh, hello, I will man. see you there. Online, you virtually. Online. Well, I see you, obviously, but I'll, I shall oh, virtually hopefully connect Hopefully, when we can meet up and everyone's vaccinated and all that crap. Yeah, well, hopefully, if we uh, if you're coming down to Bloodstock, that'll be that be the. No, uh, just get, because um, I'm doing because you know you get like the VIP campers, but then you also get those who do the Vox Society memberships. Yes, I got that, so we won't be. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good yeah well, i think you know I, I, we're going to make a, an event of it because it's going to be the first gig that we've uh we've done for over a year so uh, it's yeah, going to be yeah. great it's going to be great just to hook up with people great. and um, yeah, i think so people are say, looking forward to it so well, yeah i was saying that lg is a massive influence on me in terms of my vocals and i said and the other one is the one who's running this show right now you're also a massive influence on uh, okay that's nice i thought i thought, I thought, I thought yeah, you're, you're a massive influence of yourself what yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I mean, it could be, but then that's a bit silly. No, but that's nice to hear. Thank you, thank you, you very are, much. You, for that, Jack. you are a massive influence on my vocals. Good. I got, Good. A, I got an album from a band called Herbicidal, which is on like the Stone of Doom thing. I do like me Stone of Doom stuff. I'll yeah. send it over after yeah. the chat. Yeah. Good. And um, send a t- send a t shirt. Why not? <laughs> I'll get some t-shirts made and um and um I think one song I think the the, the first one um weed bonner that's what it's called oh, okay. I think when I do like the sort of like not too guttural it kind of sounds like you what I did I thought hmm, that kind of sounds like Carl a little bit <laughs> good well yeah it's always nice to hear that yeah it's always nice well, to hear that yeah, to, 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 um, we, we, we've kind of like want to thank you for being an influence what we, on me what we've done yeah it's it's, it's great you. yeah and, and we do that you know i've kind of been available on on social media i do get um you know people contacting me you and, are a massive and, influence. Uh, I thank you for and it's nice it's nice to hear that, thank it, you makes, for that. It, it makes it worthwhile thank you very much jack good big <laughs> good Bye. You can call me Jack if you want, but it's Jake. <laughs> I have. Just did. <laughs> you can call me Jack. If you call me Jack, I'm like, who the fuck's calling me Jack? I mean, he is. <laughs> Jack. Uh, well, take, the, take the E off my name, Jake. It will literally say Jack. <laughs> good. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Here we are, then. That's good. It's all good. And, uh, like you said, had a long career career in death metal. You're still doing a career in death metal. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. Well, yeah, we're just going to carry on doing, doing as much as we can while we can and uh, enjoying it for what it is. And long may that last. Yeah. And uh, I was going to ask if there's any new bands you've checked out very recently. No. no. <laughs> I'm checking out bands and just like, I'll just stick with these ones for now. Yeah. I have time to check out the bands. <laughs> I'm sending my band over to check out mine. Uh, no. my band, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck in my ways. Really. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in my ways. I just listen to what I know and love. You, you listen it. to what you know. <laughs> yeah. So I can just imagine you with a nice cloudy pale ale, putting on axe grinder, and just like. Yeah, that that that's that, 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 like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm usually kind of so busy writing our own music. That's all I tend to listen to is our own stuff. Your own music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, I think actually, I think actually, with, with most bands, really, isn't it? you know, they're so wrapped up in their own little world, doing their own little bubble and things, yeah. uh, that you have very little headspace to listen to other stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, and with, yeah, without being rude, um, it's very rare that I hear something new that I like because you know I've heard it all yeah. before in the past, done, done better. <laughs> so uh, without being without being horrible, uh, but there are occasionally some bands that come up that are, that are great, that are, sound sound good and fresh, and you know are, are doing something different. So uh, yeah, yeah, I quite I quite like um, quite High Lung. I heard High Lung really play with High Lung. Yeah, I like the High Lung that kind of stuff, that neo neo folk kind of yeah. um, ancient really ancient cool. stuff. That's special. But yeah, yeah, there's, there's occasionally something comes up. But yeah, I'm, I'm stuck in I'm stuck in my old ways. You're stuck, you know? in, your, you're stuck yeah. in your bubble from yeah. when you were a teenager. Yeah. A things teenager, are spe- things that were special to me then are still special to me now. Yeah, teenagers, twenties onwards. And uh obviously it showed on the gimme metal 
session you had. It did, it did, Definitely it did. Shown. I was did. just like, I know that band, I know that band, I know that band. There might have been one I didn't know. A syndrome. From... Yeah, it might have been them. Yeah. I didn't know uh, yeah. I was yeah not like, many people, not, not many people didn't know I syndrome. Like, I didn't know them, and I was entombed. Yeah, no, them benediction jumping at shadows because you did guest vocals on that. Yeah, I didn't realize I, I, I didn't realize I picked a song that I did I didn't realize, until after you have actually after you played. You just went I, jump I, I, rec I recognize those vocals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh, yeah. Shadows, I yeah, thought. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah, it's all good because he did guest vocals. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I'm happy, yeah, that's that's moving forward. I might do a, a, a track, a show which involves songs that I have performed on. Yeah, there's quite, 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 quite a few. There's quite a few to choose from. Quite a few to quite quite a few to choose from. So uh, there you go. <laughs> I, I remember hearing that for the first time. I was like, oh, there you go. That's my. Like, that, that, I've, I've, I've got to pitch that idea to them yet. I'm pretty sure they'll go for it. But yeah, I like, uh, um, I like yeah. how it it bounces off. It's then Ingram, then you, Ingram, you again, and then yeah. you go you, and then Ingram, you, and then Ingram on the next bit. Yes. Yeah, it's good lad. Good mate of mine, Dave. He's a, yeah, he's a great. He's yeah, a great I heard from him today. He, 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 he kind of sent me an email this today, saying so asking how I'm doing. So uh, yeah, I think we need to we need to wrap this up because it's half past yeah, seven yeah, now, yeah, mate. But before we go, yes. The merch. If people merch. want to buy t-shirts, patches, obviously want a new album, you can get on like EMP and places like that. But in they terms can. of t-shirts, where can we get those, good sir? You need to contact us me direct i yeah. sort that out you'll get a lovely little left you'll get a lovely little hand little note off me if you buy a t-shirt uh okay. from our big cartel site so it's remember memoriam big cartel we run it all through there there's a links to it on our website there's links to it on our facebook and social media sites so yeah please continue your support and buy oh, yeah. our merchandise it's the only thing only source of income we've got right now so um it really helps it really does help us, keep us going, pays those bills, pays for my beer, more importantly. It pays for his beer habit. Yeah. Pays for my beer bills. So people, please buy our merchandise. Help, help Keep Cole me in out. beer. Help Cole out. <laughs> buy some t-shirts, buy some patches, so he can buy some good tasty yes. ales. Yes, absolutely. That's 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 the sole reason. And don't send me any t-shirts anyone. And don't send yeah. any t-shirts. <laughs> we'll cut the sleeves off of them. Do a live show, take it off, throw it in the audience, and he's yeah, that's the thing. I might actually do have to do a live stream or something where I do some karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it loads of tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw them straight into an envelope and post about someone. There's an idea. What the hell is this? Oh, there's an idea. <laughs> and um so, and on that note, thank you very much for taking part in Jake's. It's memory. been a pleasure talking to you, Jack. Uh, I look forward mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, when, once you've uh, done this and compiled it and edited it nicely, send me the links and I'll, uh, I shall spread it along uh, my social media feeds. Yeah, definitely. I will put it on my YouTube channel. Don't know, might have to do the brightness up again, or well, not too much brightness. Otherwise, it's just going to be a <laughs> Yes, absolutely, absolutely. There were, there were no cock up, cock ups in this interview. So, <laughs> so he's been Carl Willits of Memoriam. I have been Carl Willits of Memoriam, and just the overall gent. And I'm Jake, your host of Jake's Metal Chat. Um, you don't, it's, it's, it's it's Jake. It's Jack. It's not Jake. Jack. Well, he calls you Jack. To him, it's Jack. <laughs> but in terms of everyone else, Jake. But to him, it's Jack. It's only Jack to him. Jackie, Jake. Jackie Jack. Jackie Jack. Just call me Jackie Jack. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Him, it's Jackie Jack. Okay, so it's good night from Jake. good night from Carl. Good night from Jackie Jack. It's good night from Bob. Good night from Bob. And uh, like this video, share it around because I'm going to send it to him as well. And subscribe to the channel if you want to. If not, that's fine. But it stops me from going completely insane. Mm. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Good we'll see. We'll see you all at uh, when it, when life commences again. Hurrah. And uh, this is us signing out. <laughs>